him. He's anointed to pull the miracle out of somebody else. You see, you want a pastor who even though he can sing, even though he has a miracle on the inside, he is commanded to conduct you to the next level of your release so that the miracle can come through you if you believe in see us. I'm racing. I am. I'm racing. We'll do more tonight. Good God. See, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> see, ladies and gentlemen. Joshua says to him, see, he gets to the walls of Jericho. What does he do at Jericho? He has, he, at Jericho, he says, here's what we are going to do. We are going, we, we are going to march around. We, we are going to march around here. We're going to march around here six days. On seventh day, we are going to get at it together. Had it been Moses. He just smacked the wall with his stick. They better run in. <laughs> it's not that Joshua has a lesser anointing than Moses. Because one time Joshua jumps out of character and uses his singular anointing and points at the sun and says, stop. That's a pretty good anointing. That's a, that's a cosmic anointing. That's a, that's a universal anointing. That's a, he, see, because the sun doesn't actually stop. What happens is he causes the earth to stop on its axis. He doesn't even know what to say properly. But when you're anointed, you can say something that you don't even know what you're talking about. But God makes it come to pass because he doesn't let your words fall to the ground. He says to the sun, stop. It's not that the sun stops. The earth stops on its axis. And even though gravity should have been suspended and we should have been destroyed and float off the earth everything stayed in place that's a good anointing but he doesn't use his anointing his singular anointing he wants the whole tribe to rise to the next level to drop their buckets and throw some oil he wants some young people who can come in on a skateboard jump off and go to speaking in tongues he wants some young people they may be hip hop in the day but they can pull up their pants and say in the name of Jesus every demon is coming out if you believe it say yes say yes hurry <laughs> see they come to Jordan, all this to get to Jordan. And Joshua says to the priests, grab the ark. They have to walk into something that looks like it's over their head. We done gone to prophesy. Some of you, God is calling you to some areas where you're going to have to walk into some stuff that's over your head. <laughs> And you're looking at it from the shore. And you can't look at it from the shore. You have to walk right into the water like it's going to part. I was at a, a, an airport. And I got a revelation. The hard part about being a prophet is God is always talking to me. And, and I try to stay cool and stay normal and stay calm. And because I don't want people to think that I'm crazy and start grabbing their small children. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I was at the airport and I was pulling my bag. I was pulling my bag and, and on my way into the airport and at DFW. And I and they, they have doors at the airport and, and they're, they're not the doors you open. They're the automatic doors. They're the automatic doors. I was pulling my bag and I, I was walking right toward the automatic door and there's a sensor on top of the door that can sense that you're there and when it sees you that you're close enough that's when it opens the door see I'm pulling my bag and I get close enough to the sensor for it to sense that I'm there and then it opens no door opens until you get close enough so see, You've got to walk at the door like it's going to open. You've got to walk at the door like you have full expectation. You've got to walk at the door like if God wants you on the inside, can no devil in hell keep you out if you believe it, see it. Oh, see, ladies and gentlemen, the priests, they, they walk, they walk, they walk right into the water. 
expecting it to open. What's your neighbor say, step up. See, in the Moses generation, you could just sit there. You could be a spectator and lackadaisical and lazy fair and laid back and wait for somebody else to open it. But in this generation, you got to step up. Ain't nobody swinging it on a rope. Santa Claus ain't coming down the chimney. In my neighborhood, if Santa Claus came down the chimney, he wasn't trying to bring you nothing. Amen. <laughs> If Santa Claus came in my neighborhood, we'd have jacked him for his sleigh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Brothers would have riding around on reindeer. <laughs> Christ in you, the hope of glory. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You're the hero that God wants to use. You're the zero that God wants to use. You're the one that God is going to lift up. And when you step up, he'll open the door. Uh, they step in. Now notice there's four priests to carry the ark. Mm. Watch who you walk with. You didn't hear what I said. You can't walk with everybody. Uh, there are some people that you love them, but they need to stay on the shore. There are some people that you love them, and you say, I'll be back for you. I'm going to circle around and come back for you, but I need somebody who's filled with faith. I don't need to get in the middle of a situation and turn around and you only really got my back. I need somebody. When I say holla, you say hallelujah. When I say thank you, you say Jesus. I need somebody who's vibing on my same level. Notice Jesus goes to raise up Jairus' daughter. He doesn't bring all his disciples. He brings Peter, James, and John. He says, Judas, you stay here. <laughs> Is it Judas? I don't know. I, I don't know. I would have smacked you. Yeah, I love Jesus. Don't you love Jesus? He's so full of kindness. He washed Judas' feet. No way. Having all foreknowledge that he would betray me, knowing that he would betray me, having all foreknowledge being Alpha and Omega beginning and end, knowing that he's going to betray me, I would have slapped Judas Iscariot every day for three and a half years. Every day. Every time. <laughs> You to say, why'd you do that? You will find out. You will find out. You will find out. <laughs> Not Jesus. But when it comes time to raise up Jairus' daughter, he says, Judas, you stay here. He says, Thomas, I love you. But you stay here too. I will deal with your fear and your doubt later. But right now, this miracle is too important for me to bring anybody in who's got any fear and doubt. I need somebody who can believe God. If you believe it, somebody jump on your feet and give God a faith-filled praise.